Hello everyone, I am Karthik Kulkarni and today I'll be talking about some exact algorithms that we have developed for lot sizing problems with multiple capacities, piecewise concave production costs and subcontracting. This is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Manish Bansal at Virginia Tech. Let us start with the constant capacitated lot sizing problem. Suppose you are given uh, T time periods in the planning horizon and in every time period you have uh, you are given the demands, then how do we schedule the production and inventory so that the overall production and the inventory costs are minimized? And um, moreover, in every time period, we have a capacity, we have a machine with a capacity of C1 and the setup cost of that machine is uh, Q1T in, a, in that particular time period. We also assume that the production and holding cost functions are concave. We are interested in a generalization of the CLSP, where instead of just one machine, we have n machines of different capacities, and each machine has a setup cost of Q, uh, QIT. So more specifically, the production capacity now is the sum of binary multiples of n available capacities. We refer to this problem as MCLS, or multi-capacitated lot sizing problem. We further this by adding an op option of subcontracting, which is uncapacitated. Here, ZT is the amount subcontracted and GT is the concave subcontracting function. We call this generalized problem as MCLS with subcontracting or MCLS-S. One of the special cases of uh, MCLS-S was the case where N is equal to one, and this was studied by Adam durkan Hogbaum in 2001. Here are some other special cases. Uh, when n is equal to zero, the problem reduces to the uncapacitated lot sizing problem. And for n equal to one, the MCLS reduces to CLSP. And MMLS is a variant of MCLS where uh, the binary variables are not binary, but they're integer. So uh, another interesting thing is that uh, we can remove the capacity constraints in the MCLSS and reformulate this whole problem as an uncapacitated problem. But now the production cost function is a piecewise concave uh, function with M different breakpoints. Each breakpoint is a binary combination of the capacities. So we observe that there are exponential number of breakpoints when we re reformulate the problem from MCLS to um, this uncapacitated problem. Now this problem, the reformulation, was studied by Kosha and others uh, not very long ago in 2014. So we observed that there are exponential number of breakpoints in the reformulation. And uh, the special case, as we discussed, which was studied by Atom, Turk, and Hogbaum, they give a polynomial time algorithm which runs uh, to the order of five, of the order of five. And Kosha and others solved the reformulation of the MCLSS and they give an algorithm which runs in uh, OT raised to 2m plus 3, where m is the number of breakpoints. Uh, but notice that m can be uh, exponential, that is 2 raised to n minus 1. So for example, if we have just four machines, then the worst number of breakpoints in the function will be 15. And the complexity of the algorithm will go to, uh, will be of the order of 33. Similarly, when we have just 10 machines, the order of complexity goes to 2049. In this paper, we give an algorithm that reduces the, that improves the complexity from 33 to 11, 2049 to 23. For a general N, we reduce the order of the complexity from two raised to N plus one plus one to two N plus three. Let's get into the dynamic programming algorithm. Before that, a couple of definitions. Um, we define an interval uh, KL, which is a series of periods from period K to period L as a regeneration interval if and only if um, the inventory at the start of K and the end of L are zero and it is strictly greater than zero everywhere uh, from K, K through L. Similarly, when L is equal to capital T uh, and K minus one is the final period where the inventory is zero, we call the interval K capital T as semi-regeneration semi interval. For example, in this figure, um, in the interval one and three are, uh, is a, the interval one to three is a regeneration interval and 
four to five is a semi-regeneration interval. We also propose a theorem where we prove that the optimal solution <clears throat> comprises of a series of regeneration intervals and a semi-regeneration interval at the very end. And every regeneration interval has at most one fractional period. What is the fractional period? A period in which one of the machines is producing at less than full capacity. Using this theorem, we compute the optimal cost for all possible intervals and then find the best sequence of intervals using the shortest path algorithm. For each interval, we compute the optimal cost using uh, three main steps. Compute the minimum cost without fractional period, compute all the possible fractional production levels, and compute the minimum cost with fractional periods. I do not want to get into the details of the recursive equations, but I will just point out that these are some special recursive equations that utilize our theorem and they reduce the state space significantly. We finally also prove that our algorithm runs in polynomial time for a given n. <clears throat> Let's get into the computational results now. Uh, we performed some computational experiments to evaluate the efficiency of our polynomial algorithms. Um, we generate some random instances for MCLS with two machines and three machines. And we also have two different implementations of our algorithm, one with parallelization and the other one without parallelization. So we observed that our algorithm for MCLS with n is equal to two is about 150 times faster than the previous the current best algorithm and about 29 times faster than CPLEX. Our algorithm for MCLS with three machines is also found to be up, uh, about eight times faster than CPLEX. Let's take a look at uh, some of the results. Uh, the first column uh, the first column denotes the number of periods in the planning horizon. Second column gives uh, denotes the values of the capacities and the other four columns denote the computational times using the particular uh, implementation. So as we can see in the, uh, in the highlighted column, CPLEX has an average solution time of solving all these instances uh, of around 593 seconds. And also there's a huge variation in the solution times. Like you can see some of the instances are solved within 70 seconds and some of them could not be solved within the time limit of 2000 seconds. On the other hand, the current best algorithm, which was developed by Kosha and others, uh, we can see that for 60 and 80 time periods, uh, the algorithm was not able to solve within the time limit of 2000 seconds. Whereas um, even for the other instances, the average is around 582 seconds. Whereas our algorithm, even without parallel implementation, was uh, able to solve all the instances with an average of 177 seconds. And when we implement the parallelization, uh, the solution times go down even more by around five times, yeah. Similarly, for three machines, we can again see that uh, see, there's a huge variation in the computational times of CPLEX and also the average is uh, around 557 seconds. Uh, the current best algorithm, which was developed by Kosha and others, could not solve any of the instances um, uh, whereas the, uh, our average was observed to be around 460 without parallelization and 85 with parallelization. Another observation which could be made is our computational times are very steady uh, in comparison to the commercial software. Uh, we also extend these results to the reformulation of MCLS, which is widely referred to as lot sizing problem with piecewise concave cost. And we have, an, uh, we have a new dynamic programming algorithm to solve this particular problem. And uh, the running time of the algorithm is same as the current best, but we observe that our algorithm is computationally more efficient uh, and it also supports parallel computing. Here are some more computational results. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we find out that the algorithm by Kosha, in these instances, the algorithm by Kosha has an average solution time of 116 seconds. CPLEX is found to be a little bit better. Uh, the average solution time being 45 seconds. 
and whereas our algorithm is more stable and uh, faster even without parallel computing and even uh, and even more faster when we implement the parallel computing here are some more results which uh, again are in line with our uh, hypothesis and uh, we can say that uh, we, we observed that uh, kosha and others uh, algorithm was able to, uh, had an average time of 330 a slight improvement in the cplex um, great great uh, we can see great improvement in uh, the solution times using our algorithm without parallel implementation and the average time being 18 seconds when we implement the parallel uh, parallel computing here are some results. Uh, Kosha's algorithm was found to be almost as good as uh, the state of the art solver, whereas ours was able to uh, solve all the instances in much uh, less time using both the implementations. To conclude, uh, in this paper, we studied the multi capacitated lot sizing problem with and without subcontracting, and we saw that it can be solved in polynomial time when the capacities of machines are, are fixed. Also, the computation results show that our exact algorithms for MCLS consistently outperforms the parent best. Uh, the results also show that um, our algorithm is faster than uh, the state of the art solver. And also, uh, in addition to this, we give and we present an, uh, a polynomial time algorithm for LSPC with a fixed set of uh, breakpoints. And we show that even though the computation uh, the theoretical complexity is the same as the previous best. Our computational results show that uh, it's much uh, our algorithm is much faster faster than the previous best. Thank you.